Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 18.5 Beta 2. iOS 18.5 Beta 2 is currently available to developers, and iOS 18.5 Public Beta hopefully will be out by the time you're watching this video, or sometime tomorrow. We did not get a Public Beta 1 just yet. iOS 18.5 supports all iOS 18 supported devices, and has more than just Apple Intelligence features. So far we don't have any Apple Intelligence features, but first let's take a look at the size, and this in at 1.02 gigabytes. That was on my iPhone 16 Pro Max, and it's a fairly large install for a beta 2 around a gigabyte on all of the devices here. And this was released alongside many other updates, such as iPad OS 18.5 beta 2, Watch OS 11.5 beta 2, Vision OS updates, TV OS, HomePod OS, and Mac OS updates as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go into settings, then general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 22F5053F. We're a little ways out from a final release, and you'll see it says iOS beta gives you an early preview of upcoming apps, features, and technologies. Please back up your iPhone before you install the beta. So as far as this update, well, we do have a new modem update. So we went from version 1.54.01 with beta 1 to 1.60.00. That's on the iPhone 16 models, but the overall beta update number can vary depending on what you have as far as the modem update goes. As far as new features, well, this is mostly a bug fix, but there are a few things to note. If we go into the Mail app, for example, within Mail, if you're using categories, on the left is beta 1, on the right is beta 2. This is a very small update but you'll see here in the right, it's showing through that we have all mail. Slide over and you can go to all mail. Slide back and it's just sort of peeking through on the right. And thanks to Adnan for pointing this out. When it comes to photos, they've changed this as well. They've sort of gone back to what we had before. So if we go into photos, if we go into our recently deleted photos, so again on the left is beta 1, on the right is beta 2, you'll see on the left we had the option to recover all or delete all at once. They had this with early iOS 18.4 betas, brought it back with beta 1 since they removed it from the final release of iOS 18.4, and you'll see it's gone again on beta 2. Why they keep changing their mind going back and forth, I'm not sure, but they've removed it once again. So that's a little odd. They also updated Apple Care Plus coverage in previous updates, and that's about it as far as iOS 18.5 Beta 2 so far. There are some bug fixes to talk about, but first, Apple actually released a new activity challenge for 10 years of activity. If we take a look at that, and you'll see on their Apple Newsroom website, and I'll link it in the description, it says get active with Apple Watch. On April 24th, Apple Watch users are encouraged to close their activity rings to earn a special Global Close Your Rings Day limited edition award. And if you scroll down, you can see more details where it says over the past 10 years, activity rings on Apple Watch have offered a simple, engaging, and customizable way for users to stay active throughout the day. So I'll, again, I'll link this in the description if you want to check it out as well. As far as anything else, well, Apple also seems to be removing the mentions of Apple intelligence from billboards that they've been posting around this country. Now it may depend on country, but as far as the Apple intelligence updates, we're not seeing anything under billboards for that lately. So it looks like they're just advertising the iPhone and removing mentions of Apple intelligence where they've gotten a lot of feedback from that as far as negative feedback goes, and they're not real happy about that, I'm sure, so they're removing it from their billboards. But let me know what you think of that in the comments below. As far as bug fixes, well, they have fixed a couple things. One of the things is if you're using AirPods Max with USB-C, it will work properly now and work with lossless audio. So that was something that was only on iOS 18.4. It wasn't working on beta one of 18.5 and should be working now. Also, if you use dictation in different languages, it was causing different apps to crash when you'd start to use that. It seems like they've fixed it. When it comes to notifications, so far they seem to be scrolling smooth. I haven't really had any issues, but you'll see I only have one here, but I can clear it easily, no issues there. And as far as the wallpaper bug, well, it's still there, but it seems to be less apparent this time around compared to what I had on the weekend follow-up video. It does dim it a little bit, desaturate it, but it seems to be better. As far as Apple CarPlay, we don't know if they've fixed that yet. I didn't have a ton of issues, but I did have some issues occasionally disconnecting. It seemed to be hit or miss and sometimes it would happen and other times it wouldn't. So hopefully this is fixed. We'll have to see over the next few days and talk about it in the weekend follow-up. As far as micro stutters, so far they seem to be gone. I was testing that on the iPhone 11 as well with the latest beta and they seem to be gone so far, but again, this takes a few days and then sometimes they return. So we'll have to see if they return that way.
As far as releases, well, I do expect releases this week. Hopefully iOS 18.4.1 is going to release any day now. Many expected it maybe today, maybe tomorrow, later in the week, but either way, we know they're working on it. They stopped signing iOS 18.3.2 and only iOS 18.4 is available to downgrade to. Mac Rumors and 9 to 5 Mac are also seeing this in their analytics showing that it's coming soon. So we could see that very soon to fix issues for bugs, hopefully Apple CarPlay and more. I would also expect iOS 18.5 beta 3 possibly as soon as next week. Typically after the second beta, we move to a weekly schedule and then have a final release sometime in May, according to Mark Gurman this time around. So we've seen this before. Typically we'll move to beta three, have weekly updates at that point in RC and then a public release. Apple is also working on iOS 18.6 where Mac rumors has seen it in their analytics as well. However, iOS 19 is the focus right now as they're working on getting that ready for beta one on June 9th. We're going to see that at WWDC 2025. We'll see it then betas throughout the summer and a public release typically in September around the iPhone launch. So we're waiting for all of that where we're getting a major redesign supposedly. And if we do have that along with a big update for iPad OS 19 as well, where it should be more Mac like bring productivity and much more. So all of these things Apple is working on. So I don't expect major updates from now until iOS 19 at this point. As far as performance, while well, I mentioned the micro stutters briefly before, I don't see any of those issues going into the camera has been fast. I've had no issues with that going into music, for example, it seems to be very smooth, but very similar to what we had before. As far as the smoothness promotion seems to be the same and just opening and closing apps looks to be the same. However, RAM management seems to be improved this time around. For example, I opened up 14 different applications and didn't have a single one reload when I went back into it. So that seems to be an improvement compared to beta one so far. Let me know if you're seeing the same though on your device. As far as heat, well, this does seem to be quite warm. It's been processing in the background since I installed it. I've been looking for new features and it's definitely a bit warm on the back. So it's much hotter than what we would expect before. And let me show you that briefly. And if we take a look at the hottest point on the iPhone, we're at about 30 degrees Celsius. Now that's not super hot compared to what we had before. It's under 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's actually cooler than what we had before as far as it processing a lot of data, but it's still quite a bit warm on the back. Now, if you have it in a case, it's going to heat up a little bit more and that's completely normal, but just keep in mind, it's going to process for a while. And we can see that sometimes in settings. If we go under battery, wait for it here, go under battery health. Under battery health, you'll see I'm at 100% with 172 cycles. And if we go back, sometimes when it's processing in the background, we'll see that here. I would expect that to pop up. Sometimes it can last a about a week sometimes at the most. If we take a look at my battery over the last 10 days, it hasn't been great on beta one, but it will take time to know what beta two is like. But you'll see the day before, a couple days ago, I had three hours and 13 minutes of screen active time, four hours and 39 minutes of screen idle time, and used about 75% of my battery. So it hasn't been great overall with beta one. Hopefully beta two improves it, but again, it takes a few days to know that. As far as overall storage, well, let's take a look at that. And we'll go down to iPhone storage, give it just a moment to load here. And if we scroll down to the bottom, go under iOS, you'll see Apple intelligence is still taking up a lesser amount than what we've had before. 6.28 gigabytes and 12.38 gigabytes for iOS for a total of 18.65 gigabytes with iOS 18.4. And before we saw this over seven gigabytes. So it looks like the code is getting more efficient or they're just streamlining things overall. As far as if you should install iOS 18.5 beta two at this point, if you're on 18.4, I probably wouldn't install it unless you're a developer, you want to test something out, at least wait for the public beta at this point. So at this point, I really wouldn't install anything. No reason to do that. There's not a whole lot of changes, but if you're testing code, of course, you'll want to do that. As far as benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a look at those. I finished running benchmarks and we have 3,506 for single core, 8,394 for multi-core. Like I mentioned before, it's still a little bit warm, so it's processing and it seems like it's well within the margin of error at this point, definitely running a little bit faster than beta one that we had the higher scores here. So in general, it seems to be very smooth, but again, don't expect a huge performance difference here, but it is a little bit better on iPhone 11 on the left here that you can see.
Now, as far as anything else, well, that's pretty much everything so far with iOS 18.5 beta two. Now, if you found any additional features or changes, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.